Balancing chemical equations is one of the most important skills in chemistry. And today you're going to learn how to do it the right way, step by step. Let's start with why equations must be balanced. In any chemical reaction, mass is conserved. This means that the number of atoms for each element must be the same before and after the reaction. Atoms don't just disappear and they don't appear out of nowhere. They just rearrange. Take this reaction. Right now the atoms don't match. There's one carbon, four hydrogens and only two oxygens on the left, but three oxygens and two hydrogens on the right. That's not allowed. We fix this by balancing. By increasing the number of oxygens on the left and the number of water on the right, now both sides have one carbon, four hydrogen and four oxygen. The chemical equation is now balanced. Before we dive into our main example, here are three tips to make balancing easier. Firstly, start with elements that appear only once on each side and take it from there. Secondly, balance hydrogen and oxygen last. They're usually involved in multiple compounds and can cause confusion. And lastly, treat polyatomic ions like sulfate and phosphate as single units. This can save a lot of time. Now let's go to our main example. This is a reaction between phosphoric acid and potassium hydroxide. Let's balance it step by step. Following our tips, we are looking for an element that appears only once on each side. And in our example here, that's potassium. On the right, there are three potassium atoms, so we need three potassium hydroxide molecules on the left. Now potassium is balanced. Next, we look at the phosphate ions. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. It stays together in both reactants and products, so we treat it as one unit. There is one PO4 on each side, so that's already balanced. Now we take a look at hydrogen. H3PO4 has three hydrogens and 3KOH also have three hydrogens. That makes for a total of six hydrogens on the left-hand side. We need six hydrogens on the right, and since water has two hydrogens per molecule, we need three water. To double check if we did everything correctly, we can now count the oxygens on both sides. We see that on the left-hand side, we have four plus three equals to seven oxygen, and on the right-hand side, we also have four plus three equals seven oxygens. And that's the proof that it's balanced correctly. So let's recap. Always start with elements that appear once on each side. Leave hydrogen and oxygen for later. Use polyatomic ions as single units where possible and double check by counting atoms on both sides in the end. Now that you got the method, let's try two XM style questions. Balance the following equation. Pause the video and give it a try. Since on the right side we have three magnesium atoms, we need three magnesium hydroxides on the left. The phosphate ion appears twice on the right side, so we need two H3PO4 on the left. On the left hand side we have six hydrogen from the acid and six hydrogen from the base, so a total of 12 hydrogens. To balance this we need six H2O. To confirm its balance correctly, we now count the oxygens on both sides. It matches, so the equation is balanced. Now try to balance this. Pause the video and give it a try. Starting with the aluminium here will lead us in circles, so we better start with sulfur. The lowest common multiple of 8 and 3 is 24, so we need 3s8 and 8al2s3. Now we have 16 aluminium on the right hand side, so we also need 16 aluminium on the left hand side. So the final balanced equation is 16 aluminium plus 3s8 reacts to 8al2s3. And that's how you balance chemical equations by following a clear method and keeping the law of conservation of mass in mind. Practice is key, so make sure to try more past paper questions if you have time. If this video helped you, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to The Learning Curve for more tips and tricks. See you in the next video.